Welcome to our worship service this morning. We have the joy of celebrating Pentecost. I see so many colors of uh, red out there, also yellow and orange folks are wearing. Remember the, the flames of Pentecost that appeared over the disciples' heads as they were anointed by God's Holy Spirit. So uh, we're celebrating that wonderful event today by having a presentation by the choir and our children. And very much looking forward to that. Uh, gives me a break. I don't have to preach so long today. That's all right. If you're visiting with us today, I invite you to grab one of the visitor cards and fill that out. And then drop it in the offering plate when that comes along later in the service. That gives us a chance to get to know you a little bit better. With those announcements made, we will have the ringing of the bell, followed by our opening hymn, God Bless Your Worship. Oh, there was one thing I was going to announce. Next Sunday is Memorial Day weekend, and the custom at Emmanuel is to have some of our servicemen, of our veterans, carry the flags in procession. So we would need four to help with that, two at the 8.30 service, and then two at the 11 o'clock service. If you can help us out with those processions for next weekend, please, please let me know. We would love to have that recognition in our service. With those announcements made, let's have the ringing of the bell followed by the opening hymn. God bless.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I invite the congregation to kneel. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto Thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against Thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to Thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring Thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given Thine only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us, and hath given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgiveth us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he giveth power to become the sons of God, and bestoweth upon them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, O Lord, unto us all. Congregation may rise. The Spirit of the Lord filleth the world. Alleluia. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Alleluia. 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 Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. from above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for them that in faith piety and fear of God, offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, pity, and defend us, O God, by thy grace.
the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Please be seated. Jesus and his disciples gathered in the upper room. He instructed them in the, his final hour, saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. As Jesus continued instructing his disciples, he said, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Not understanding, Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus replied, saying, I am the way and truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now as Jesus continued to instruct his disciples, he explained to them, these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all the things that bring to your remembrance that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be, be afraid. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. with his disciples to begin his journey to Gethsemane, 
to a place called the Kidron Valley, about a half mile's journey. Jesus continued to instruct his disciples. He told them, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you will also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of the world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Now Jesus enters the garden. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. As it is written in Luke 3.22, at the baptism of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit is who gave Jesus the strength and the power to overcome the agony of his death. As Christ entered the garden, it is written in Mark 14, 35-36, And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will, it is then Jesus went and found his disciples asleep, and he told them to continue to pray. It is written in verse 38 that Jesus told them, The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak.
And so it was after the death and resurrection of our Savior. It is written in Acts chapter Acts 2, 1, 4, and 17, 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.
Please rise. The text for our message this morning is from John's Gospel, the 15th chapter, and focused on the 26th verse. But when the Helper comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. This is the Word of God. Please be seated. Before I get started into the into the sermon formal, I want to say thank you to Sherry for, for organizing that, for Liza uh, working with the children and the choir to bring all of that together. Also, the many other volunteers who help support this work, especially in our Sunday school. God bless you. Wonderful presentation by our young people today about the coming of whom Jesus calls the helper. The helper, that is the Holy Spirit, a title for the Holy Spirit. And that's a title that we might easily get confused with, right? We could, sometimes they refer to people as the help, right? As they're people who are unimportant. But that's not at all the sense that's being used here by Jesus and the Scriptures as they describe the work of the Holy Spirit that God is giving to that helper, that Spirit. Jesus tells the disciples, and as the children presented to us, the Holy Spirit would come. The Helper would come from the Lord. And there's a rich use of that expression, Helper, found throughout the Bible. It takes us all the way back to the beginning, the book of Genesis and Eden. When the Lord makes Eve, a title that he gives to Eve is Helper. Eve is going to be Adam's helper. And this is not a title that diminishes Eve in any way. She is going to help Adam do something that he couldn't possibly do by himself. Because God's first word to Adam and Eve is this. Be fruitful and multiply. Adam can't do that by himself. He needs worthy help, doesn't he? He needs worthy help to carry out God's command. And that title helper there gives us a picture of the honor that God gives to that help and service, even from the beginning. Later on, we read in the scriptures this title helper again and again. It comes up, especially in the Psalms, and there it describes God himself, that the Lord is our helper that the lord is helping us through our faith through our life through the struggles that we face it's a title that god himself chooses to describe his work among us as his people i'm just going to read one of the passages there from the psalms that i shared earlier this morning in the preaching it's from psalm 118 verse 7 the lord is on my side as my helper, I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. The psalmist writes, God is our ever-present help in time of need. Now, when Jesus uses this word that we translate helper, it it's, has a special sense to it. It, it works like this. Literally, the word means to call to one's side. To call to one's side. That's who the Holy Spirit is going to be. He's going to be taking his place alongside and with the disciples as the Lord sends them out on the mission that they will have. He is going to be their helper in the struggles they face. He's going to be the comforter to them when they're in the hardest and most difficult times. He is going to be the counsel to those, those disciples as they now fulfill the other worldwide mission they got, that God gives. And it, with Adam and Eve it was, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth with your children. But here it is, take the gospel. The gospel to the very ends of the earth. That all people may hear and know that God is our Savior in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the help that the Holy Spirit will bring 
to the apostles. Think about what happens on the day of Pentecost. What a difference the day of Pentecost makes in the lives of those disciples. Before Pentecost, they were afraid. They were afraid they were going to be arrested and even put to death like Jesus was on the cross. But after Pentecost, after God gives them His Helper, His Holy Spirit, they are strengthened to proclaim the Gospel. And they do so publicly and boldly. Before the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, the disciples often misunderstand what Jesus is trying to teach them. In fact, that's one of the running comedies in the Gospel, is how the disciples so quickly misunderstand the teachings of Jesus. But after Pentecost, after they receive the Holy Spirit, after they receive the Helper in their lives, they become wise in the ways of the Lord and in service of His kingdom. Before Pentecost, Jesus says to the disciples, guys, wait in Jerusalem. <laughs> wait. I've got something more. You need help. And I'm going to send you that help that you need. After the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit immediately sends them out, leads them to speak God's Word to people of all nations. You heard that, that list of, uh, of nations, of the different languages that were spoken on the day of Pentecost, that was by the work and power of that Helper, the Holy Spirit, so that others could hear the great works of God, of salvation in Jesus Christ. Before the coming of the Spirit, before the day of Pentecost, the Kingdom of God was just one nation. Old Covenant, Old Testament, Israel. But since that day, the Spirit of God has led the church to spread God's kingdom, God's rule to the ends of the earth. Two and a half billion people now claiming the name of Christ, confessing Him as their Savior around the world. What a mighty work God accomplished by sending His Helper, the Holy Spirit, to His disciples. And this is a fact I want you to take home with you today. That same Holy Spirit, that same Helper that was poured out on the day of Pentecost, that same Spirit was poured out upon you when you were baptized in the Lord's name. When we said that name over you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, entered into your hearts, into your lives. He became your helper. He became the one at your side. And the wisdom and courage that he imparted to the apostles, folks, he will impart to you as you carry forward God's mission to take the gospel to your family, to your friends, and even to the ends of the earth. What a marvelous gift and blessing we have in God's Holy Spirit. And that's what we're celebrating today on this day of Pentecost. I love seeing all that red and yellow and orange out there. The church on fire, on fire for the Lord and His witness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with our offering.
Lord, we lay at thy request the costliest offerings on thy shrine. For when we give and give our best, we give thee only what is thine. Amen. Fire will now sing. Fellowship 
of your holy church. Sanctify us that we purged of our sins and unrighteousness may be fit for the master's use and prepared upon every good work. Let the sanctifying wisdom and power of the eternal comforter descend upon your church, that she may be strong in faith, impart to her his sevenfold gifts of grace, that her elders may have bright hopes of the time when the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters that cover the sea, and when her young men and maidens may be granted inward vision of the holy triumph the gospel. Stir up your church, O Lord, and fill it with zeal to seek the lost, to bind up the broken heart, to bring comfort to the imprisoned, to heal the afflicted, to cheer all who mourn, and bless those here on the south side and throughout greater Columbus who need the gospel of Jesus in their lives. Give your spirit room in all homes that he may lead every child who bears your name into the paths of love and obedience, and endow every parent with an understanding heart and gentle ways, so that the, together the family may adorn the doctrine of our Savior with <coughs> godliness and all honor. Govern the, govern the nations upon the earth and help them to acknowledge your power, dominion, and righteous judgment so that they may turn from evil ways and live. Give unto our land and all in authority, firmness in the right, and steadfastness in integrity, and be our shield and buckler. To all in trial or tribulation, the sick, the weary, the oppressed, the fearful, the needy, and the lonely, give the peace of Christ. We intercede this day, dear Father, asking your mercy and your healing for Tyler Atkinson, Jennifer Bennett, Bonnie Blake Crabtree, Lila Lily Cunningham, Nisa Durfee, Shaney Lewis, Madge Parsley, Randy Pavanoster, Jason Scheinberg, Anne and Gabe Shopstall, Alexa Watkins, Mary Jo Yost, all those that we now name quietly in our hearts before you. Bless also our servicemen and women and our first responders, O Lord our God. Be their strength and guide in the midst of trouble. Call them to your side. Comfort them. We pray for our shut-ins, O Lord our God. Send out your spirit to them this day. Surround them with your care. Give them an ever-increasing trust and faith in your mercy. We ask your blessing upon the following households of Emmanuel. The Brown families, Crosser, Dannemann, Darst families, Dooley, Drennan, Driver, Dunbar, and Everhawk. That they may be kept by your grace and your good spirit. We pray, O oh Lord our God, your blessing upon those celebrating birthdays. Emmy Wearsley, Teresa Darst, David Rose, Mikey Roby, Courtney Stevenson, Belmo Ransford, and Donovan Garner. Bless them, O oh Lord our God, with joy in the midst of their families. We pray for Michael and Heather Leffler, Jason and Liz Scheider, as they celebrate their anniversary. May they be, O oh Lord, in the deepest love, like Adam and Eve enjoyed together in the paradise that you created at the first. Hear us now, O oh Lord, as we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. one another as you depart. I invite the congregation now to rise and sing the closing hymn. After the hymn, give a round of applause for the children. Please rise.